Hi there. Now, if you have already watched cost classification for manufacturing accounts, now we are good to go to understand how can we prepare a manufacturing account. But if you haven't watched cost classification part of this video, I would strongly suggest that you go and watch that in order to understand how to prepare a manufacturing account. Now, manufacturing accounts, dear students, is tested in examination and the basic purpose of manufacturing accounts is to calculate the total manufacturing cost that is incurred by any manufacturing business in order to produce the goods or provide services okay so uh, the heading is basically given in an examination question uh, in my case i have written ard textiles that is it is my own company then we have manufacturing accounts heading for the year ended what would be the year end date okay so basically we made it in uh, two columns and these two columns are not basically debit credit these are just for illustration or presentation purpose first of all there are three components in any manufacturing one is material then we have labor then we have expense so we'll be worrying about direct cost first and then we'll move forward for indirect cost first of all we'll be writing direct raw material now, how to calculate direct raw material? First of all, we have opening inventory. This means the material that we have at the start of the year. This would be the material that is left at the end of last accounting year and the closing balance for last year would become opening balance in the current year. Okay. Now, if we'll be adding purchase of raw material, whatever uh, amount of material that we have purchased in the current year, then uh, we'll be adding carriage inwards. Carriage, there can be two carriage. One is for carriage inward and one is for outward. Inward means uh, the transportation cost that is incurred in bringing goods into the business. Now here the carriage belongs to raw material. So uh, when we buy when we buy raw material from a supplier and, and if the supplier says us that we have to bear all of the cost for bringing in goods to our business that is factory. So therefore the carriage inward is basically cost for the business and this, this will increase the raw material cost. Therefore we are adding carriage inward. Then we'll be directing return outward also known as purchase return. Return outward means the material that was faulty and that we have returned to our supplier will be directing that and then we have closing inventory closing inventory means the raw material that that is unused at the end of the year and will be using this raw material in the next uh, accounting period therefore we'll be deducting it closing inventory now the final answer to all of these becomes cost of raw material consumed cost of raw material consumed my dear students mean uh, the material that uh, we have used in the current accounting period is known as cost of raw material consumed after raw material consumed friends uh, let's move forward for direct labor direct raw material and then we have direct labor direct labor also known as uh, factory wages in the exam or production wages or manufacturing wages this all means the same thing okay direct material and then direct labor direct labor are the labor that are directly involved to make a product uh, that is uh, the basic labor that they are given uh, that they are uh, frontline workers they are uh, factory workers they are working on the machines in order to assemble a product or finish a product all of the production department production cutting painting assembly finishing molding testing welding all of these departments labor known as direct labor so why they are known as direct labor because their time is basically traceable normally we pay them per unit or we pay them per hour but we have the calculation that in one hour these labor are going to make this much units so we know about the productivity this is known as direct labor then after direct material direct labor the third direct component is direct expense direct expense uh, also known as royalty in the exam royalty means uh, if you are making a product uh, that does not belong to us okay uh, for example uh, here in Pakistan uh, we have Pepsi. So the, the Pepsi that we manufacture here, uh, as you may be aware, Pepsi is not a Pakistani brand. It, it is a US based brand. So the original founders are based in US. So the Pakistani company that has taken license or uh, license to prepare Pepsi in Pakistan uh, pays a royalty to the original uh, Pepsi Cola company uh, in US or whichever country is based in. So this amount of money that we are paying to the original founders is 
is known as royalty so normally royalty is not uh, is such like a lump sum uh, that you pay us uh, this much amount and you are good to go how many units you want to manufacture it's not like that uh, basically we have to pay a royalty on per unit basis that how many units we manufacture on each unit or uh, on each can of pepsi we have to pay this much amount and each uh, lace chips packet we have to pay this much amount and each aquafina water bottle we have to pay this much amount so this is royalty basically now if we add up all of the direct cost dear students this would become prime cost prime cost is sum of all direct cost direct material direct labor and direct expense if we add up all of these this is known as prime cost and if we do not have a direct expense only direct material and direct labor are combined together in order to calculate prime cost now in prime cost my dear student we have already calculated all the direct cost now let's move forward to the indirect cost in indirect cost we have uh, overheads and the overheads that we have here are production overhead production overhead are all the uh, costs that are not direct these are basically indirect costs indirect costs means basically these cannot be traced directly into the product that we cannot tell how much rent we are going to pay for each unit manufactured or how much electricity is consumed in manufacturing each unit or how much value uh, is declined uh, uh, from the machine how much a machine is depreciated by making single unit of product okay so these are basically indirect costs it can be indirect labor or uh, it can be factory a uh, manager or supervisor we cannot trace the time of supervisor or manager because manager or supervisor or indirect labor are not paid per on per unit these are basically paid on per month basis okay so there are factory cleaners there can be a factory technician or there can be a factory watchman security guard and these are all indirect costs uh, there can be indirect expense with the name of indirect expense there can be rent or insurance uh, and for example uh, the examiner says us that 75% or 3 fourth of the rent or insurance belongs to factory so what we'll be doing we will be apportioning we'll be dividing the total rent cost will be charging 75% to the manufacturing account and the remaining 25% would be charged to an income statement okay we'll be preparing it in the second part of the video then we have factory machine depreciation now all of the assets that belong to factory plant and machinery or factory building the depreciation of that is also being charged to a manufacturing account and uh, if we have depreciation for office asset office equipment or office computer or office building this depreciation would be charged when income statement so all of the cost to make a product will be charged here in manufacturing account okay so if we add up the direct and indirect cost component this is the total for direct and indirect cost and basically there is no name for this uh, amount but we just need to calculate this is the no name figure and finally we have to adjust it for work in progress now what is work in progress my dear students work in progress is basically uh, incomplete goods what is work in progress work in progress is basically incomplete goods incomplete goods means that we have started working on it but we have not yet completed working on it uh, there can be uh, work is uh, basically it can be completed 10 percent or it can be 90 percent completed so as long as the work is incomplete this would be treated as work in progress now now what we'll be doing we'll be adding up opening work in progress this is the work in progress at the start of the year and we'll be deducting closing work in progress now why are we deducting closing work in progress closing work in progress is being deducted why because this work has not yet been completed and this will be completed in future okay in the second year maybe uh, we are ahead standing in 2021 2021 and this work will be completed in 2022 so therefore we are not going to charge this cost right now in 2021 instead we'll be waiting uh, for these costs to come get completed in 2022 okay therefore we are deducting this cost and why are we adding up opening work in progress opening work in progress uh, in 2021 was basically closing work in progress to 2020 last year okay so the last year the goods that were incompleted will be going to we will be going to complete these goods in the current year that is 2021 so what we need to do we need to take the difference of opening and closing and if the open work in progress is greater than closing the net answer would be positive okay so this means work in progress is being uh, uh, opening is greater and closing is less so net it is opening work in progress okay so uh, if it is opening work in progress uh, net so this is a positive value so those a positive value needs to be added up in this okay 
a positive value is going to be added up in this. And what if we have more closing work in progress and less opening work in progress? This means our closing work in progress has increased. If the closing work in progress has increased, we need to deduct it in the manufacturing cost. Okay. And in this case, closing work in progress is being decreased. Therefore, we are adding it. So to, to keep it easy, we just need to see that which is greater figure, whether the positive value is greater or negative value is greater. If the positive value is greater, we need to add up this. And if, if the greater value is the negative value, we need to deduct it in, in order to calculate production cost. So production cost, uh, dear students, is basically the total cost or that is the total factory cost uh, of the units that we have manufactured in the current year. Okay, now let's move forward to the next part of the video and that is how to prepare an income statement in a manufacturing business.